The confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 414,185. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 7,740. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 2,135, with total confirmed deaths at 77. We anticipate those numbers to change as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Ben McCain. It's 4 p.m. on Thursday, December 3rd. Southern California residents woke up to wind and smoke from two area fires. A 500-acre brush fire near Corona called the airport fire sent plumes of smoke into the air today along with last night's brush fire that erupted in Silverado Canyon called the Bond Fire, burning more than 7,000 acres and forcing mandatory evacuations. The airport fire was reported around 5.30 p.m. last night, which then grew from about 100 to about 500 acres this morning. According to Cal Fire and the Riverside County Fire Department, the flames forced the closure of Highway 71 in both directions from the 91 to the 83. And with strong winds today, authorities raised concerns over heightened fire danger leading to power shutoffs throughout the region. Fire officials reminded area residents to remain vigilant, saying conditions could change quickly. Well, the South Coast Air Quality Management District issued a smoke advisory today due to those fires. Effective today through Friday morning, the advisory impacts Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties. Both fires continue to produce heavy smoke based on satellite and webcam imagery and air quality measurements. This morning, the air quality index levels showed unhealthy levels in northern Orange County and Long Beach area due to the airport fire and very unhealthy levels due to the bond fire affecting central Orange County, especially in cities like Newport Beach, Irvine, and Lake Forest. Caution is advised for residents in any areas where you can smell or see ash due to the wildfire. Limit your exposure by remaining indoors and keeping windows and doors closed and avoid vigorous physical activities. As a precaution, Sea Air Golf Course along with the Binstead Plunge were closed for the day. Advisory updates can be found at aqmd.gov. California Governor Gavin Newsom held a press conference this afternoon to give the latest update on the state's response to the coronavirus surge. Governor Newsom announced a new regional stay-at-home order as an emergency break to curb the dangerous spike in cases recently. Breaking the state into five regions, Northern California, Greater Sacramento, Bay Area, San Joaquin Valley, and Southern California, he says when the ICU hospital capacity falls below 15% capacity, the new stay-at-home order will be triggered for a period of three weeks. Current projections show that all regions except the Bay Area could meet that threshold, which means bars, wineries, personal care services, hair salons, and barbershops will need to close once again. Restaurants would be able to only offer takeout and delivery, which doesn't change too much for Southern California, but all retail stores would be able to stay open at only 20% capacity. And lastly, all non-essential travel would be temporarily restricted to statewide only regardless of what zone you live in. Governor Newsom says the effects of Thanksgiving have not yet been felt and says we should expect what Dr. Fauci had said, that we may experience a surge upon a surge. The Department of Defense shared a preview of what a COVID-19 vaccination record card will look like once vaccines become readily available. The cards will be issued as part of the vaccination kits from Operation Warp Speed. This card can be kept in your wallet and tells what the card holder had and when their next dose is due. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a COVID-19 vaccination program interim playbook that says for most COVID-19 vaccine products, two doses of the vaccine will be needed between a span of three to four weeks. And because the different COVID-19 vaccine products will not be interchangeable, a vaccine recipient's second dose must be from the same manufacturer as their first dose. The vaccination kit will also include a needle, syringe, alcohol wipes, and a mask to be used by those distributing the COVID-19 vaccine. The City of Los Angeles announced a targeted safer at home order for LA residents effective immediately. This mirrors the one issued by county, the county last week restricting gatherings with anyone outside of one's household. 
and only allowing for essential activities in an effort to reduce the spread and flatten the state's third coronavirus surge. Mayor Eric Garcetti held a press conference last night calling it necessary for the protection of life and property, asking residents to cancel all non-essential activities and hunker down as the city experiences a dangerous spike in COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations. The new order also says travel, whether by foot, bicycle, scooter, motorcycle, car, or public transit is strictly prohibited with exception for essential activities. Violating the order is a misdemeanor and subject to fines and even jail time. The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power can also shut off utility service for those violating the no-gathering rule. Mayor Garcetti urged the Los Angeles Police Department and the city attorney's office to help enforce the new order. Wednesday, the county reported another 5,987 new cases for one day after reporting a record high of 7,593. The county also reported 40 additional deaths with more than 2,400 currently hospitalized. The city of Pasadena also issued a temporary limited stay-at-home order. Residents are required to stay at home between hours of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. with the exception of essential activities. While restaurants will remain open for outdoor dining, restaurants must be closed by 10 p.m. and guests dining at restaurants must all be from the same household to be seated together. Their order went into effect last night and runs until December 20th. The order comes as Pasadena, which has been less restrictive than Los Angeles County's order, announced the new limits after inspectors caught multiple violations of COVID-19 health protocols. While Pasadena has its own health department, they have followed the county's lead on most orders during the pandemic. Los Angeles County's ban on in-person dining will remain for now as a judge declined to issue an order lifting the restrictions. Instead, L.A. Superior Court Judge James Calfant directed county attorneys on Wednesday to provide medical evidence about COVID-19 transmission being used to justify the ban. Last week, the County Board of Supervisors debated the issue after the county's Department of Public Health imposed the ban, but ultimately voted 3-2 to two to uphold the ban. The restrictions remain until at least December 16th. Judge Calfant scheduled another hearing for Tuesday afternoon. Opponents of the ban say tens of thousands of restaurant workers could lose their jobs as there are more than 30,000 restaurants in Los Angeles County. As restaurant owners reel with more restrictions, the county is offering some financial relief. The Keep Los Angeles County Dining Grant program officially begins today, allowing eligible eateries to receive up to $30,000 in assistance to go towards employee payroll, capital to continue operations, and payment of outstanding business expenses. Roughly $5.6 million was made available and will be split among the county's five districts. Supervisor Janice Hahn said in a statement, these grants are meant to help as many restaurants as possible make ends meet and make it through this crisis. She continued to say, we know it won't be enough. We need another federal stimulus package to get a lifeline to all of our businesses and workers that are struggling, end of quote. Hahn, along with Supervisor Catherine Barger, were the two who opposed the county's decision to ban in-person dining. The program is operated by the L.A. County Development Authority, the application can be found at keeplacountydining.lacda.org. Preference to be said to be given to restaurants that provided outdoor dining as of November 24th. The window to apply is limited and closes on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. or until 2,500 applications are received. A criminal investigation continues into unemployment fraud claims among California inmates. Nine county district attorneys and a federal prosecutor are looking into a sophisticated crime ring involving fraudulent claims made to the California Employment Development Department to the tune of nearly $400 million. Prosecutors discovered the fraud included inmates working with people outside the prison, and last week estimated $140 million was paid to about 20,000 prisoners between March and August. But after reviewing records more closely, the California Labor and Workforce Development Agency, which oversees the EDD estimates, the figure, they estimate the figure closer to $400 million. In all claims uh, were submitted for 31,000 inmates, and while two-thirds were paid while out, an additional $80 million were not. 
Reports show that California approved benefits for at least 133 inmates on death row, including some of the state's most notorious killers. It's unclear, though, how many prisoners actually got the money, as prisoners' identify, uh, identity could have been stolen to file a claim. As the NBA prepares for the start of the 2021 season, 48 out of 546 players tested positive for COVID-19 during the league's initial return to market testing phase. The NBA announced Wednesday that any player with a confirmed positive test will be in isolation until cleared under the NBA guidelines. While the positivity rate is close to 9% below the national average, which is hovering around 10%, just over 10%, as players traveled from all over the country for the start of the season. It was expected to see a large number of positive tests. The league expects the number of new positive cases moving forward would decrease as they spend more time in one place. While the league finished out the year playing in a bubble at Disney World in Florida, the season uh, teams, uh, this season, teams are expected to travel across the country and play at home games in their usual home venues, likely with little to no live fans. This round of Testing took place from November 24th through the 30th. The season tips off on December 22nd. New rules and restrictions were announced for people traveling with service animals. The Department of Transportation is rewriting their policy regarding service animals. Previously, the department required airlines to allow animals with passengers who had a doctor's note saying they needed the animal for emotional support. But airlines expressed concerns that passengers were abusing that rule and bringing unusual animals on board from cats to turtles to pigs and even a peacock in one case. Now the agency says only dogs will be allowed to be brought on board as a service animal and all other companions used for emotional support will need to be checked into the cargo hold and pay a pet fee. The agency estimated airlines will gain nearly $60 million a year in pet fees alone. Airlines can require that service dogs be leashed at all times and they can bar dogs that show aggressive behavior. The new rule takes effect in 30 days. San Francisco-based business software company Salesforce.com made the announcement this week of their acquisition of Slack, a popular workplace messaging platform. In a statement, Salesforce co-founder and CEO Mark Benioff said, this is a match made in heaven. Together, Salesforce and Slack will shape the future of enterprise software and transform the way everyone works in the all-digital work-from-anywhere world. The $27.7 billion deal is aimed at giving the two companies a better chance at competing against longtime industry powerhouse Microsoft. Salesforce was also among the companies bidding to buy LinkedIn in 2016 before Microsoft snatched up the professional networking service for more than $26 billion. As the pandemic opened, the avenue for many industries to embrace the work from home concepts, steering away from large office settings, platforms like Zoom, Slack, Microsoft Teams are likely to be the wave of the new workforce. Both Salesforce and Slack are headquartered about a block away from one another in San Francisco. Another one bites the dust as tech giant Hewlett Packard Enterprise announced plans to re relocate their global headquarters out of California to Houston, Texas. Company officials say that employee relocation is voluntary and no layoffs are planned with this move. William Hewlett and David Packard, who co-founded or who co-founded the company, founded the company in a rented garage in Palo Alto in 1939, kicked off the Northern California's region's tech scene, eventually landing the moniker Silicon Valley. In 2015, the company split into Hewlett Packard Enterprise and HP Inc. HPE concentrates on the business of selling data center hardware and business hardware, while HP Inc. helps the legacy PC and printer operation. HP Inc. is still headquartered in Silicon Valley and remains financially stronger of the two companies. HPE is building a 440,000 square foot campus in the city of Spring, about 25 miles from Houston. The campus is set for completion in 2020. When California's economy is booming again with tourists and travelers, Del Amo Fashion Center will be a great destination to learn more about all that the state and our city has to offer. The newly opened and very first California Welcome Center, Torrance, is now open at Del Amo Fashion Center, the country's third largest shopping mall. 
Here you can discover inside tips, plan a trip, get free or discounted tickets, and much more. There are interactive touchscreen kiosks along with customized activity planning available on site. Delamo is also welcoming back visitors at 20% capacity with safety a top priority. Disposable masks are readily available at mall entrances and social distancing floor decals can be found throughout the shopping center along with sanitizer stations. Staff are scheduled to regularly clean commonly touched surfaces as well. The city of Torrance was one of three proposed welcome center destinations along with Ridgecrest and Fairfield, which were originally slated to open this spring. Well, as we head into the weekend, be sure to tune in to Weekends in Torrance. New episodes air at 3 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. If you ever wanted to try Randy's Donuts, you're in luck with their newest location now in Torrance. Leslie Robbins takes us inside and behind the scenes from their grand opening ceremony. Plus, with the latest stay-at-home order, if you're looking to get some fresh air, a peaceful walk around this local gym may be the perfect solution. And as the frontline workers once again face another surge in COVID-19 cases, we'll introduce you to a local artist who's made his latest exhibit all about our essential heroes who continue to put their lives on the line in order to help others. These stories and much more, be sure to tune in this weekend at 3 p.m. at our special time due to an extended council meeting. You can find us on Spectrum Cable Channel 3, Verizon Files Channel 31, streaming on our website as well as on YouTube. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community, feel-good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. A local fitness studio is giving back this weekend with a special offer. South Bay Cheer 360 is partnering with Who We Play For and are offering free heart screenings this weekend on Saturday, December 5th from 1 to 5 p.m. They're located at 1275 Sartori Avenue and in an effort to raise awareness for heart health, parents, coaches, and athletes are encouraged to find out if they may be at risk for a heart condition. You must register online. The screening takes about 10 minutes and a $20 donation is asked to go towards Who We Play For when booking your screening. You can go to whoweplayfor.org and click on South Bay Cheer 360. You'll be able to pick your time slot, which is offered in 10-minute increments. Students must be at least 10 years old to participate in the screening program. What a great way to stay informed and educated on heart health, especially for our young active athletes in the community. Now, if you have a great story to share, email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID19 today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday for new episodes of Weekends in Torrance. We'll see you right back here on Monday as Leslie Robbins brings you the latest. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.